Hi, my name is Amy Erbeck. I am the Disability Services Coordinator for the Nampa campuses at the College of Western Idaho. So the support services that we offer at the Student Disability Services Department at the College of Western Idaho is reasonable accommodations per the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. We can provide reasonable accommodations to students that have a diagnosed and documented disability, a mental condition, or even temporary disability. Some of those examples of accommodations, which we typically don't share with students until we're in our one-on-one -on -one meeting, but to give you an idea, is like extended testing time or alternative formats of textbooks, sign language interpreters, those kinds of things. So the students that benefit from our services are, again, disabled students that have a documentation or a diagnosis of a disability. It could be a mental health condition, so it could be depression, anxiety. It could be a temporary situation, maybe a student that's recovering from a surgery that needs a foot pedestal, you know, to keep their foot elevated, something like that. So there's two different locations, a NAMPA location and an ADA location in Boise. So I'm the coordinator that works primarily with NAMPA students, and my office is in the Willow C building. And then my colleague, Cheryl Rose, she's the coordinator for the students out in Boise, and her office is located in the Lynx building. So the thing I want to emphasize first about directing students to our services is that we cannot directly ask a student if they're disabled or anything to do with their disability. So that's a breach of ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and so we have to keep their information confidential. We can't walk up to a student and say, seems like you're struggling, do you have a disability, maybe you could use these services. We want to avoid that. Students are protected under the ADA. None of their information is accessible to anybody outside of Student Disability Services. We keep their documentation. We use a separate system than any other system at CWI, and that information is always private and protected. I like to clarify that with faculty is that you will never know why a student has accommodations, and you're never allowed to ask them why they have accommodations or in some way or form pressure them to tell you. I like to clarify that. Next, I like to to make sure faculty understand that when you do get that letter of accommodation, it is an obligation under ADA. There is a legal obligation for faculty to fulfill those accommodations. And as I mentioned before, students with the same diagnosis or even with the same approved accommodation, they could look a little different in, in terms of what they need. And some of those accommodations you'll notice are written in sort of a vague way, and that is purposeful because they might need something more specific, and that's where that communication between instructors and student comes in. And along those same lines, when you have that communication, there are a couple of things that we want to make sure we're avoiding. So again, we don't want to ask anything about the disability. We always recommend that instructors ask, how can I support you? And that gives you more information. I mean, it makes students feel a lot more comfortable to open up. And it also gives you more information about how to sort of tailor that accommodation to them and what they need. We also want you to be aware that there are comments that may come out innocently but could be taken in an inappropriate way or an insulting way and an example of one of those is you don't really look like you have a disability like you don't look like other disabled students that I work with or I was surprised to see that letter of accommodation you're not somebody that I would ever think has a disability those kinds of things while they, they might come out innocently or have that innocent intent those kinds of things can be very hurtful for our students so we ask you to be cognizant of the things that you say in those meetings and those communications with students you'll always want to be supportive and never make any assumptions. There are two main ways that we recommend that faculty refer students to us. The first way is a general announcement of CWI resources. So typically, if not required, to be in the syllabus to have resources and information. So typically in the syllabus, there will be a blurb about student disability services and that gives students information. But we encourage faculty to throw a shout out to us, you know, maybe that first class when you're going over the syllabus, just so everybody hears that if they kind of glaze over the syllabus and don't quite see that blurb. Um, you can just throw it out there as a resource with the other CWI resources. The second way that we recommend referring students to us is if a student discloses their disability to you. So the key difference in talking with a student with a disability is if they disclose, you can have that conversation with them and then you can directly refer them to us. If you suspect that there's disability but they haven't confirmed anything or disclosed anything, you don't want to make that assumption. And 
until they tell you, until they disclose. And when they disclose, we want you to refer them directly to us. Along those same lines, if students disclose, you can take the initiative to submit a care report and let, let us know. I had a student that approached me, disclosed a disability, they might be needing some services, they might struggle to reach out, and then we get that routed to us and we reach out to them. Again, the main point being they have to disclose it first. So we like to make sure that faculty know that the same responsibility for any other student is held with students with accommodations, whether they have them in place or are in need of them but don't have them in place. We encourage you to treat students all the same. If you see someone struggling, go offer support or give them resources, that kind of thing. So definitely still provide, have those conversations and approach and support students even if they have accommodations or not. So faculty are always welcome to reach out. We are always happy to answer general questions whether you have an accommodated student in your classroom or not we're happy to clarify the process just so you feel comfortable when if you do run into that situation where a student discloses you feel confident that you know that you're directing them appropriately so absolutely you can reach out at any time to myself or Cheryl and we'll help clarify anything the other resource that we have for faculty is on the student disability services web page so it's just CWI dot edu slash or backslash SDS. We do have a section on there that says faculty resources and support. So on that, there's some frequently asked questions. There's some guidelines on some specific accommodations. So there is some support and information there, as well as some general disability information, like more detailed information about the Americans with Disabilities Act and those kinds of things too. We are available to collaborate with instructors to answer any questions and support students in any way that we can. And if that's us coming to office hours with them, to mediate and help support, we'll do that. If you instructors want us in meetings, we can do that. If there's any clarification needed, we can do that. We just can't share the private protected information. We ask that instructors focus on the accommodation and what they can do within that accommodation to support that student's needs.